that you are brand new little sweetheart of swing. <laughs> You're listening to Stay Tuned, the show for animation lovers, recorded live on YouTube and also streaming on Patreon. Coming to you from Austin, Texas, I'm your host, Phil Maki. My original comics can be discovered at RetailSunshine.com, and you can interact with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook under the handles of both Retail Sunshine and Phil Maki. Also, you can keep up to date with the latest animation news by visiting this show at facebook.com forward slash stay tuned show. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Tonight, Stay Tuned welcomes Rich Walters, the first animation composer to be featured on the show. All that, and you'll have a chance to share your thoughts, questions, and opinions with me for a live Q&A after the show. On tonight's show, my special guest is a Canadian composer, known for scoring TV series such as Sci-Fi's Van Helsing. He recently entered the animation world with a Netflix original series called Reboot The Guardian Code. Several weeks ago, I reviewed Reboot The Guardian Code and explained how it has not been well received by fans of the 90s show that inspired its creation. But the score itself is worth a closer look, and that's just and that's just what we'll be, and that's just what we'll be doing this episode. The hard-working Rich Walters will be here to discuss his part in bringing the all-new Reboot to life in just a few moments. But first, this. Okay. Rich Walters, welcome to Stay Tuned. Good to be here. All right, cool. So you are a film composer. Is that the best way to phrase it? You know, that's the way I needed to phrase it, and I find all people these days are calling us media composers just because the wide gamut of different, just all the different output sources these days that are existing in our modern world. Ah, I've never heard that term, but I actually really think it's appropriate. That's good. Yeah, you know, it is. It kind of makes more sense. But yeah, a media composer. Okay. So, so, yeah. I'm, I'm retraining my brain right now, trying to like, when asked, I'm trying to say that. I like that. No, I like that. Music as a career is fascinating to me. How did you get started with that? Did you have first grade piano lessons and it all went downhill from there? <laughs> no, no, not at all, actually. I was, uh, I really have memory of music with my mom playing Beatles records. You know, I tell my friends, I tell people I know when, when they ask similar questions. It's always felt like it's part of my DNA. And I grew up noodling around on stuff. I'm 49, so uh, in my early years, I spent, uh, <laughs> I'll just cherry pick some moments, you know, dressing up in kiss makeup, making cardboard <laughs> instruments, uh-huh. you know, doing that kind of thing in, in the 70s and that. And then I was always enamored by drums and percussion. So I went down that avenue as, as a young person and I stayed on those tracks. I went to music school as a percussionist and then post music school, I decided it was time to rock and roll instead of doing the serious thing because I had done orchestral stuff and jazz stuff at a very high level, but I wanted to do rock and roll. I wanted to do electronica. It was electronica back then, not EDM. And I spent a number of years doing that and I'm just giving you really broad strokes here. Sure. Uh, when I was in my early 30s, I ended up getting a really redundant entry-level job in a post-production facility here in Vancouver, BC, Canada, and started, you know, getting in the fold of post-production. I'd see the composers wheel in and come in for a review of the mixes and that, and they seemed to have a really good lifestyle. You know, they didn't have to tour, and not to be arrogant or whatever, but, you know, I'd listen to it and I'd go, hey, I can do that, and sure. that's what I'm going to do now. And sure. then the rest is history. I just decided that's that's what I want to do. No, that's awesome. Yeah, when you find that thing that you, yeah. you're like, yes, when you think I can also be a part of that 
that world. I think that's a good indication that that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah. You know, Phil, it's interesting too. Like there's a realization I came to a number of years ago too, is I knew it at the time, but I didn't really know. It. And, and it really synthesized for me later on in life, spending all those years playing in bands with other guys. You know, if this band, oh, we're doing great. We're gaining popularity nationally. Oh, we're doing awesome. Oh, well, that guy's not into it anymore. Okay. You know, I was feeling weary of, of always having to rely on someone else yes uh, to, to help get me to a place and that was another thing that i really found appealing about the film composer vocation is i realized very early on that this is all up to me i don't have to rely on anybody else it's about my own drive and determination i, I found that appealing as well no that's a good point and i i'm right there with you i've, I've felt that way my whole life and I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. Even though you got started with drums and whatnot, you've also been involved in sound design on films like X-Files Fight the Future, right? Yeah, with that one, uh, it's kind of uncanny. The people I've been able to meet and work with along the years. And when I did the X-Files stuff, that was a really unique situation because it was all sound effect stuff. And I worked with a guy from Los Angeles, a real heavyweight down there. He came up to Vancouver because it was shot up here through a friend of a friend. Uh, I got introduced to him and, and ended up hanging out with him for a little while and, and working with him. And it's another one of those situations where at the end of it all, when the dust settles and you're all done and the frantic pace is finished, you just go, oh, I, I never, just months ago, I would have never imagined that happening. Like, it's, sure. It's really uncanny. So, I yeah. mean, what was your foot in the door in the industry? Was it sound design or was it music? No, I, actually, no, this is kind of bizarre because it was neither. I got a job as a person that prepared the ADR and wall sheet for the talent that would come in and have to do their ADR lines and for the oh. wall group players that would come in and do wall up. I'd prepare all their uh, catch all the time codes and the descriptions of scenes and lines of dialogue that need to be replaced. It was a great gig because while I did that, I was out still engaged in rock and roll and doing live music so I could do this job I was self-employed I just had to meet my deadlines but that job was so interesting because it was a nothing job but in hindsight it was so dynamite because I had to work directly with post-production supervisors on all the shows that I was doing okay. I got to build a rapport with all these people so down the road when I finally made the jump from ADR wallet programmer to I first became a music editor it was really easy for me just to contact all those people and say, hey, by the way, I'm doing this now. And it was crickets for a little while, but as soon as people, you know, like anything, it took time. As soon as people figured it out that I could do that, then the phone started ringing. So again, it, was, it seemed like a nothing job, but in hindsight, it was so perfect for getting introductions to really key people in the industry. And that's, yeah. I think you just nailed it. It's uh, consistency seems to be the key and it's about who knows you. That's a big part of it. Yeah, you, you just never know, Phil, you know, rightly so. I was oblivious at, at the time as to what this could do for me for my future right this right. seemingly unimportant job right but i learned to really utilize it once i kind of figured out what was going on there right did you know you wanted to do music underneath all of that or you didn't know until after you've been doing that for a while oh uh, no i knew i've always known like, i've always been doing music that gig was a job, right? That was Got a it. job that I did while I was, like I said, I, I'm 49 now. I've come to a few crossroads in my life where it's like, well, do I want to keep doing this? And inevitably, it, it's, the answer is always, yeah, I got it. It's in my DNA. I, yeah. I can't shake it. I, I, exactly. I've got to be doing it. I, I know I'll be a, a sad, lonely man. But <laughs> well, I mean, and I, I get that. It's I've described that to other people in regards to art. I am compelled, you know. I don't know anything else. Yeah. And so I'm right there with you. So typically your work has centered around sci-fi, fantasy adventures. Is this like a comfort zone for you? Or are you just getting typecast at this point? No, I'll I'll do whatever I'm hired to do. And although I do love that, I mean, I have done Dirty Secrets. You know, I have done a few Hallmark. Okay. MOWs. You know, I, I go to work. You know, I got to pay the bills. I've got a studio. I've got, uh, I've got stuff. It's expensive to roll this operation, so to speak. Sure. So, you know, yeah, I do whatever I can. But honestly, what really gets me is cerebral, dark, sci-fi drama kind of stuff. That's right in my sandbox. That's, Very cool. That's where I feel most inspired. Would you say that's yeah. because of things you watched growing up, or is it just more No, recent? I think it's just my personality, Phil. But I've got a dark heart, you know. There's a lot of pain <laughs> there, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, I don't have to reach too far to, to conjure up those uh, that type of subtext to put against any kind of picture, right? I'll, I'll take your word for that one. Yeah, it, uh, it, <laughs> I feel at home there. All right. 
So Stay Tuned is an animation-themed show. My major reasoning behind bringing you on here today is because of your work with a recent show that, you know, does fit in the sci-fi realm, but it's also in the animation realm, and it's it's your first foray into animation. The show I'm referring to is, of course, Reboot the Guardian Code, and for those who don't know, Reboot was a computer-animated series in the 90s. It was the first of its kind. This is pre-Toy Story stuff we're talking here. This was a show that greatly inspired me as a kid, which is why I gave the rebooted reboot a chance. And I guess my question for you is, how did you get involved with Reboot? Uh, I heard the rumblings in this city for quite a while, for probably a year or two, even before it landed on my lap, that Reboot was finally getting redone. Finally, someone at Rainmaker, the current CEO, finally was getting it happening. And a friend of mine, another composer friend of mine, I know was doing demos for it. And he was being romanced by them. He had a couple people in contact and he reluctantly told me and I said, dude, don't worry. I'm not going to. I'm not even going to do that. And he went, you know, back and forth with them. And, and I've had him talk with him sometime later. And I said, hey, whatever happened to the reboot thing? And he said, you know, it kind of fell apart. He says, I, I don't think they're interested in me. And I went, oh, wow. Okay. And that still wasn't, you know, I was probably buried under some other avalanche of shows at the time. So I, I couldn't even think about it. And then a friend of mine who I've known for, oh, 20 years, she was one of the higher ups at Mainframe or Rainmaker, the animation company that owns the IP for it. Right. And she had said something. She said, yeah, it's getting close to done and uh, we're still looking for a guy. And, and then she left the company. And then some friends of mine, a post-production supervisor I know, a guy that runs a post-production facility I know, they got the gig. And the post-production uh, supervisor and the guy that directed all 20 episodes, I've done a lot of work for him. So I guess when they were back at their headquarters and it's time to start having the composer chat again, my name came up and, uh, you know, I met them. It just went really well. And then, you know, I, I guess they walked away and said, we want that guy. So they ended up getting that guy, which is me. So, and, and then uh, <laughs> uh, we just went from there. But but the thing too is I did fire some of my material off of them, knowing kind of what they might be after. I had a feeling and it completely resonated right away. They were already temping that stuff into episodes already. It was actually some of the stuff I had written for a movie I did called Chappie and they loved it. So it was kind of even before they came here. I think well, they already I mean, that's awesome that you bring that up, by the way, because I happen to I happen to love that movie, Chappie. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Here's the thing. I, I'm not a big fan of shooting people down or anything, but I will yeah. say as a fan of the original series, I absolutely was let down by by reboot the Guardian Code. However, yeah, I, I can understand why. I yeah. Really can. Yeah. But what I did want to say is there were a few standout performances and by performances, I mean just aspects of the show where I felt like, OK, that person gets it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. the music for me is one of those performances. Of course, you did the job that they hired you for. And so I assume the tone you were giving them was the tone they wanted. Yeah. Regardless of if it matches the tone of the original series, all of that aside, I just think musically it, yeah. it stands on its own very well. And if I'm going to compare it to something for those that haven't seen it, I would say it was reminiscent of the score that was done for Tron Legacy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's great you say that, dude, because all that kind of stuff was my inspiration, right? Very heavily bit crushed, over compressed. Yes. Uh, very contemporary, lots of RPGated elements, just full out. I just threw everything at it. It's so nice of you. It, I'm so happy that it at least impressed someone as yourself, quite far away from me in Austin, Texas. Check mark. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, that score that Daft Punk did for Tron, to me, if someone wants to know what the inside of a computer world would sound like, that's it, you know? They're Daft Punk. They did exactly what needed to be done. Yes. They, that, they didn't no. pass anything. They didn't phone anything in here. No, yeah, no. They, these guys are madmen. They, yeah. They lived and breathed this for as long as they had to do it. I'm glad that they produced that before so that I could just, you know, sit on their shoulders, so to speak. I don't bring it up to say that it's, like, derivative, but it was yeah. it inhabits the same space as that score, you know what I mean? Yeah. It felt like the world that yeah. these kids were going into in Reboot, it wouldn't be too big of a stretch to look to the right and see Tron standing there, you know what I mean? You wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if, if, and, and that's great. I think that's, yeah. that's a 
exactly what it needed to be. So kudos to you for that. What that leads me to ask you next is, with this being your first jump into animation, even though, to be fair, Reboot The Guardian Code yeah. is a hybrid show. It's got live action elements. Yeah. That's probably a really good stepping stone for you, right? Going from live action to a live action animation hybrid? Oh, it was brilliant. Like, I'm involved in something right now that's rather completely cool full animated series and when I look at my tutelage here I guess I could say I, I look back and I think oh wow yeah I, just like you said wow this is perfect reboot was a great like get my toe in this world because it was half and half yeah. and now I'm invested in full on 22 minutes of insanity right so <laughs> right. It's, it's great it was good for me it was good for my brain to start to get my head around this on how we do animation how is working on animation different that's my curiosity here the differences lie in just how quickly we need to change things up, how things turn on a dime, just the, the vast amount of different genres that can be included in one episode. You can just switch gears instantly and it doesn't bump. It's so much fun to work on animation stuff. It's a lot of work. It hurts my brain sometimes, <laughs> but still like when I listen back to it, when you're modulating all over the place and tempo changes, these key signature changes and genre changes within a 20 second sequence, on picture it's it's fun right and it's what it's done for me in hindsight is going back to trauma land right now i'm doing season three of this vampire show i do called van helsing it pays dividends i see in in the other worlds that i get to play in as well oh good yeah like it's all it's wonderful i'm truly like really grateful that i've been given these chances here that's awesome so you're saying it's helping you what one situation is helping you grow and then you're able to take that experience and it impacts your other experiences oh completely yeah full force totally what more could you ask for i say <laughs> so yeah exactly yeah going into reboot did you know how big of a legacy you were becoming a piece of a larger fan base did you uh know that already oh, oh i was very aware of everything that has existed or come before me and i was curious as to why they didn't go with the previous composer they wanted a more contemporary sound they just wanted to redo everything so i knew the amount of weight that the series had and the dedicated fan base that existed before and geographically speaking as well this is the epicenter for the whole thing and even post reboot i was in a working with a bunch of individuals years ago and i think it was was it the transformers beast wars okay yeah that's that's definitely as well yeah 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 i i got to demo for that and, and it came i came really close to having the opportunity to, to do that show but you know it wasn't the right time it didn't happen so you know because reboot there was so much excitement at that time back in that era yes when that other show came up it was, yeah. it was like okay i want on this bus how can we get on this when you were working on the guardian code did you kind of get a sense that maybe this series wouldn't live up to its predecessor oh i i completely knew it wouldn't yeah i could sense the whole time that ooh, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to be happy with this it's tricky to try and express these things when you have your clients over. You, you never want to commit career suicide in that respect. But I did realize early on, and I was told early on, having kind of skirting around these conversations, these kind of like, ooh, oh, wow, mm hmm that like this show has been trying to get remade for maybe a decade or more. Yes. Like a while. Yeah. Every CEO that came into Rainmaker, that they were going to, okay, they're going to do this, and then they would get shot down. And I heard that the only way that it even that they got the funding to do it was that if it was a half live action and half animation that's the only way this would have seen the light of day so they were pigeonholed or they were that was how it had to be it had to be half and half do you know why so, that's such a strange request for a show well, that was... i guess they couldn't get a sale no network would buy it if it was full out animation they felt for whatever reason and i might be this is what i was told that's fine who knows if what truth there is into it rich you're closer to it than anybody that i know so as far as i'm concerned yeah, yeah the story that's interesting to me here is you're in a position where like you said you're hired to do a job and it's like you're seeing the titanic start to sink around you and <laughs> and, and, and you're one of the musicians yeah. who's like, well, we're going to play this music as we go down into the water. You know? That's right, yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know what? You're so right. At the end of the day, those, that's it. It's like those are the battles that I, that's my battle, right? It's like, you know, this is the music department here. That's all I got to worry about. All that other stuff, that's you guys. That's your mess. 
you guys can worry about that. I got to worry about my own mess here. I just got to worry about making this sound dope. Like that's right. It's got to sound great. Yeah. You know? Like that's tricky enough to do as it is. Is there any chance that it's going to come back in a different form, or do you think that they pretty much nailed the last one in the coffin with this? I don't even know. You know, I was actually oddly enough, I was having dinner with the showrunner uh, like a week or so ago, and I asked him. I said, "So, um, what's it looking like? Like season? We call it season two because we did the first twenty in, in one swath there, which I guess it, it, that's like two seasons. So it would actually be season three." for and he said there's still no information if it'll go again so my spidey sense tells me uh probably not you know i bet i bet you that's it but who knows right you never know it depends on the broadcaster it depends on netflix is, is what i've been told if they want to throw some more money at it then they would throw money at, and that's what you would see again you would see yeah you see that again kind of thing i will say the last three episodes in the arc of it all you know the, the, I, I can only speak artistically for myself musically i was so just so jazzed with how i was able to wrap things up with the theme of the show and the artistically i was hitting three pointers the whole way through there so oh that's so, good um, if you're feeling sad about everything else when you watch it just take the score <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> well that's well that's good i mean I, I look forward to hearing that music i was just hoping that the second 10 episodes would have been an improvement over the first 10 but i guess uh well i think you you know i'll just say this you're in for more of the same oh. it, it is what it is okay that's, i think diplomatically i can say that and, and that's that's fair because that's, that's fair word. yeah and, and why well, same, same format yeah the same kind of peaks and valleys through each episode kind of thing well that's unfortunate but at least i now don't have to be sitting here on bated breath wondering if maybe it got better i feel a little better <laughs> knowing that the other question i wanted to ask because it's you know it's a little bit of a different world musically as you called it a media composer versus a band it's obvious when when there's a band because they go on tour and they've got t-shirts and they've got cds <laughs> you know if somebody wants to support rich walters and his music how do you recommend people do that oh man i wouldn't even know how that's i've never been posed that question before i don't know just uh <laughs> Tune into the show. <laughs> I don't have an, an online store or anything like that. Or okay. Or when someone buys a copy of Chappie, for example, or whatever, yeah, is that how you get paid? Or oh, uh, we, you know, I make I, I make a few bucks off something like that. It's very small. It's it's a very different world from a popular artist, so to speak. Okay. Soundtrack soundtrack releases are generally promotional things. They're not done to make any kind of money, unless you get a unicorn thing like a Stranger Things kind of scenario there, okay. there's always an exception to the rule that's kind of like an exception to the rule or star when wars they're, when they're that popular yeah like if it's a studio picture or something like that i would imagine they see a proper return off that off the sales of those but in my hemisphere here it's nothing uh okay <laughs> I'll buy you a coffee. <laughs> well, that, well, I guess the, where I was kind of leading with that question was, I really enjoyed the music from Reboot that you made. If I wanted to listen to Reboot, are you going to make it available as like a digital download at some point? Or It's really tricky in the first place to get a, a soundtrack going. It's even trickier if it's not well received, the series, so to speak. So that being said, yeah, I'm still pushing on that. And in my world here, I'm buried in work right now, and I can't even think about it at the present time okay um, i have put the feelers out I, I do have that i am working on it but not till i, I can't do anything with it until the end of october but to touch on what you said like for me that was such a joy to write that stuff and i'm so happy with what i've done there thematically with how it all just tied together i, I definitely want to make a record for that for the reboot oh yeah and, you know, it's important for people to understand, just to touch lightly back on the reboot thing, why I'm making a point out of this. It has to do with a lot of those episodes were poorly lit. Oh, I see. Yeah. And because they were poorly lit, I don't mean the live action parts, I mean the animation parts. Yeah. Because yeah. of that, it you just didn't get a good sense of space or anything. You just didn't get a good sense of the environment. And for a lot of that part of the show, the music is what informs the the audience because they didn't have the visuals you know yeah yeah so i mean you yeah your well, work thank was... you that's that's great thank you so much yeah that's, that's a heavy compliment oh i mean and I, I totally mean it because i mean i don't think anybody traditionally expects the music to carry that kind of burden <laughs> only the producers <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But yeah, I mean, never, the, never the viewing public. Or no, never the viewer. No, never the viewer. But, but the people, I, my my bosses, yeah, they, yeah, that's what they always expect. Yeah. Well, there you go. 
That's that that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> but I've got to say, as much as I love the music, because I really do love it, it's very bleak. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. But it but bleak is not a, a musical tone I would have associated with a kids show. Yeah. Yeah. That was such a strange situation when I saw that. I was like, I I wonder if they're aware that this is a very dark feeling show and it's about kids in high school. Well, you know, that, that's a really good point you bring up. Yeah, I had not really. Uh, it's very revealing. You yeah, just you're right. Just the way even the, the live action stuff. Yeah, it, it is very bleak. It's dark, definitely. Yeah. Right. And, and what's funny about it? It's not even it's a little bit of the subject matter but it's also just the way that they filmed it and it's the way that they have the actors acting everything just feels yeah. very weighty yeah and then you've got these very heavy situations with these kids and their parents and and that's fine i think weighty stuff is good but yeah it made me wonder like who's gonna watch this and come away from it thinking what you know <laughs> for the performing rights organizations that we composers belong to when i get my quarterly statements from them it shows me how many views these oh. shows get on oh. Netflix, so I can't wait to see what kind of views Reboot's getting for you guys in the U.S. I'm so curious to see yeah. how many people have watched it. Yeah, yeah, because I've even asked the producers uh, if Netflix shares those metrics with them, and, and they said, nope, Netflix doesn't tell us anything. They don't let us know, and, and I thought, wow, that's interesting. And, and, and post that, I thought, oh, hey, I'm going to find out. I'll, I'll get to it. That, that info will be revealed to me. Wow, that's great. Episode 10, where they do that callback to the original series, Yeah, a lot of people are very offended by the 40-something-year-old fanboy character. Oh, I imagine they are, yeah. I think I could be sensitive as to why a population of people would be offended by that. Oh, yeah, and I know you had nothing to do with it, but I'm just out of curiosity's sake. Did they think that was funny, or do you think that they were trying to... Oh, Oh yeah, yeah. It was all it was constructed with loving intentions. I can say that for sure. Okay. And during the production of that on the music side of things, I had the producers, I had the showrunner here. They were here two, three days a week in my studio for music reviews, spotting sessions, more music reviews, more spotting sessions. They were here so much, and I know when when we did that episode, they had the best intentions. They okay. Really did. Well, that's good. Yeah, and it's interesting because I'm aware of all that back. I've been online. I've seen it all, right? I've seen. Oh, all. okay. I haven't. Not, I haven't seen it all, but I've seen a lot. <laughs> I've seen a lot of the reviews, a lot of the talking heads stuff on YouTube, you know. So I know what you're talking about, but but on the hindsight of that, sitting behind the, the curtain here, I go, ah, it's too bad because they had really good attention. On this. I'm going to try to point out the bright spots as best I can because I'm, look, I understand it's not everybody's responsibility for the story. All you yeah. can do is bring your particular piece to the table in the best capacity that you can. Same thing with the voice actors. The voice actors don't control the story, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And for what it's worth, I actually think a couple of the actors, the, of the live action actors, I, uh, particularly the young girl that that plays the uh the, the vera character the vera thank you the vera character the girl that plays she's, vera. she's dynamite she is she's so good she is yeah she's good because she's genuine and i think that yeah. um that character really they should be feeling very fortunate that they have her because at this point she's like the best person on the show yeah she was very strong yeah i i, I enjoyed everything she did you said earlier you got more animation in the work some full-on animation with no uh live action counterpart Part. What can you tell us about that? Where can we hear you next in cartoons? I am doing this really, really cool show called Super Dinosaur. It's a graphic novel that's been brought into animation land. The novel, the graphic novel series was done by uh, Robert Kirkman, who's responsible for The Walking Dead, other things like Invincible, like that kind of stuff. Okay. And you had me at dinosaur. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> Again, with this one, I was oblivious to it. It was a friend of mine. Uh, it was a composer cattle call. I don't know, 20 guys submitted. I got in on the mix, and at the end of the day, it ended up on my lap, and it's so cool. I really think this one's going to get received quite well. It's firing on all cylinders in my jaded old man kind of <laughs> vernacular <laughs> experience. The writing is so strong. The animation is is so unique and the lighting and the animation is it's just brilliant it looks like a pixar production uh wow 
everything's just great on it. I can't say enough. Like we, we have a gas here in the studio working on. We're so invested in it. Well, I am. Uh, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a typical thing. It's like it's for kids, but it's got a lot of adult overtones sure. built into it as well. well. I'm a huge dinosaur fanatic over here, so I'm sold already. The fact that it sounds like there's uh, robots and dinosaurs combined or something along the lines of that. Oh, dude, there's all that stuff. It, oh, my it, gosh. It's just so full of everything. And each episode, I mean, we're just, I just finished uh, episode 20, and it's just so interesting. It's not cookie cutter stuff here. The character development. The, okay. You know, it's got some meat on the bone. It's really good. Well, so I mean, I don't think there's an international sale for it yet. Uh, uh, it, it'll be released here in Canada first, but it's just a matter of time. It's too good not to not to be sold. I don't know if the ripple effect will hit our American friends like Phil and the company down there. <laughs> um, keep your ear on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, but congratulations on that, Rich. That sounds like that could very well be your ticket to a bunch more animation. Well, I can only hope so. I can only hope it's more animation like that or more animation in grown-up kind of feed, like, you know, adult animation like Samurai Jack. Yes. Uh, yeah, Samurai Jack. Yeah, like, I, I want to get my teeth in something like that. Like, I'd really like to play in that. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah, the Super Dino thing, like, it is full tilt. It's like music from frame one right to the end but the thing is is it's all warranted it's not overdone i'm trying to be as classy and, and smart about it as possible and the feedback i get from my peers up here from the sound designers the mixers the producers is, is everyone's over the moon with it so i just hope i hope the public receives it that way as well and and uh because it's a gas it's so much fun so i just love doing it well, i mean that's so, exciting uh, I, I can't wait to, to it's see so this rewarding thing. Yeah. yeah. If you dig Reboot, I think you'll dig when I'm doing on. Oh, you know, good. Right that is good. Even when you get a chance to do it. And I can't wait to see it. I really, I'll, I'll make sure I let you know what, what I think when I do. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. I really would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing Super Dinosaur. Cool. And I will probably end up watching the rest of Reboot out of fan loyalty to the series. Just grab some popcorn or whatever and, you know. Yeah. Just surrender to it, Phil. That's all we can do, right? <laughs> I know, and, and you know, I, 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 I'm really excited for you. I, I know you, you know, you mentioned your age a couple of times, but regardless of that, it seems like it's taking an interesting and exciting turn. And I'm really thankful that I got to talk with you at this point in your career because this is an exciting change. It could be, right? Remember, like I said earlier, you just never know. You never know what happens. All I do is I put my pants on every morning, show up to the studio, and I just, I just want to make, make good stuff. Some days I do. Some days it sounds like crap. <laughs> <laughs> and then other days it sounds wonderful, you know? <laughs> well, I appreciate those thoughts. And I, I actually think that that's all any creator really should should be striving for is just to put their best work out there. And like you said, do some good, honest work. So I'm glad to hear that there was at least one person on that project for Reboot that had that mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was a few. There's a few I knew. Oh, I, I'm I sure there were. I'm sure there were a few. No, I I, yeah. I just don't know any of them. <laughs> You're the first one. Yeah. So you started in the right place, right? That's right. You, you chose well. Yes, you chose, thank you. I you did. Really well. I do want to thank you again for joining me today on this episode of Stay Tuned, Rich. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Phil. Yeah, much appreciated. And, you know, we all look forward to hearing what comes next. And I guess all I can say now is get yourself a web store and make some of this music <laughs> available for the people that like me are seeking you out you know okay you're the spark that lights the fire my friend yeah. <laughs> well good <Thank> you. <laughs> you're yeah. welcome As always, we're about to take a short intermission where we'll listen to a little music from tonight's feature.
That was a selection of score from Reboot, The Guardian Code, composed by Rich Walters. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Special thanks go out to Rich Walters once again for joining us here on the show. His music can be heard in the all-new animated series Super Dinosaur, which premiered September 8th in Canada. The show may end up reaching more markets depending on its success, so for now, we'll just have to wait and see. Of course, thanks to all of you listening in live on YouTube. And say, if you enjoyed the show and would like to listen anytime, why don't you join me over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash philmaki and become a subscriber today. Not only are there cool rewards, but you can also stream anytime you like, which means never missing an episode. I've been Phil Maki, you've been a wonderful audience, and until next time, keep those eyeballs peeled, those ears open, and be sure to stay tuned. is a wrap on the uh, recorded part of the show. So now we're here at the after party. Woohoo! After party! Yay! So if anybody has... I don't know what I'm doing. If anybody has any questions about the t- about tonight's interview, about uh, the cartoons we talked about, about the, uh, the guests that I had, if you have any questions, send them over to me right now in the chat, and I will uh, address them on the air. Uh, we got about 15 minutes or so to do that, so feel free to throw anything up there. Woo, says Lacey. Woo. I also say woo. And Puppet says woo. Puppet loves saying woo. Woo. <laughs>